Hey guys, welcome to this session on how does machine learning works by IntelliPad. In this session, we'll take a look at how does machine learning work. We'll take a look at what machine learning is, what is the machine learning process, and how does it work underneath the hood. We'll also have a demo in which we'll be using natural language processing to perform some analysis on a block of text and understand how you can use machine learning on your day-to-day -day basis. How does machine learning work in an application context and how do you use it on a day-to-day -day basis? All right, let's take a look at the agenda for the session. We'll begin by taking a look at what is machine learning. Then we'll take a look at types of machine learning. We'll then take a look at how does machine learning work. Then we'll take a look at the machine learning process as in what are the steps that are taken when we are trying to do machine learning in a particular application. And finally, we'll have a demo of natural language processing or NLP. So let's take a look at what is machine learning. Machine learning is the process of using mathematical concepts with computer programming to give machines the ability to learn from data. One of the most important aspects of today's digital world is that data is being created at a rapid pace. So we are creating data by every click that we're making, by scrolling through our feed, by clicking on products, or simply by existing. We have some data about us that companies can use in order to better tune their products. This is where machine learning comes into play. Machine learning takes the data that we have generated and turns it into useful information. This information could either be some sort of an information where they can understand what our likes and dislikes are and they can give us better product recommendation. That's one of the use cases. Other use cases could be that they can take a look at your buying history and figure out what should they recommend you next or take a look at your search history and understand what kind of things you're into and suggest you news according to those things. Google, Flipkart, Amazon already do these kinds of things and many other companies do these kinds of things including news corporations and uh, e-commerce websites, search engine, search engines and many other many other multinational companies and products. So let's take a look at types of machine learning. So there are two main types of machine learning. First is supervised learning. Second is unsupervised learning. Let's try and understand what that means. In supervised learning, we have some data with some label. Basically, we have some data that is the input that we want to give to the machine and some uh, label, which is the output that we want from the machine. Uh, essentially, you can think of it as questions and answers. And what we want to do is we want to give machine learning algorithms that data and we want them to learn from that data and create a model. The data will try and figure out a rule based approach or a pattern through which they can most effectively match a particular input to a particular output. In our cases, the input data to the labels. So for instance, if I have some data about uh, we, we, I have some images and those images I have labels for those images that tell us whether or not those images contain uh, the face of a person and I feed that data to a machine learning algorithm what it will do is that it will understand what the data contains and uh, using that algorithm it will try and figure out okay what particular things are in one image and not in other image through which we can understand that this image contains the face of a person and could there could be many other use cases of this as well then comes unsupervised learning and this is really important unsupervised learning is used when we are trying to use some sort of a you know, unsupervised learning is used when we are trying to gain some insight into the data that we have whether we're trying to segregate some data whether we're trying to uh, whether we're trying to separate a few data points with each other or we're trying to group certain data for instance if you have some customer information such as the customer interaction data and you wish to know what uh, is the age group of people that will that are interacting highly with your product you can do customer segmentation that's unsupervised learning and there's many other aspects of it as well such as creating groups out of a data and then figuring out what was the criteria through which the group was created basically clustering your data into a way that makes most sense so there are many ways of uh, dealing with data and uncertainty in unsupervised learning uh, it's called unsupervised because here we don't have data with labels so we just give it data and say okay you figure out some sort of information that might help me based on the algorithm that we're using now let's take a look at how does machine learning work just a quick disclaimer machine learning is a very interesting topic but after a certain point of time it is a black box so after you feed data and algorithm you don't really know what exactly does the machine uh, what are the rules that the machine has generated for itself how has it learned these things 
what are the kinds of things that it has understood. You can only check its performance after a point of time. And the performance is checked by keeping some data aside during the training process. And that data that has been kept aside that the model knows no nothing about is shown to the model and we check how many of those were given correct predictions, the correct labels were predicted and so on. So in machine learning, we need a lot of data for our model to learn from an algorithm. So if you have a particular machine learning uh, problem that you're trying to solve, first thing you need in order to solve it reliably is a large amount of data, which is why at the beginning of the session, we mentioned that since there is a lot of data available for us to learn from, and a lot of data that we can use for our own benefit, we use machine learning for that. But the, since it, there are not a lot of data points available for machine to learn from, it's either going to perform poorly in the real world or not going to be uh, performing at a satisfactory level. So just make sure that you have a lot of data in machine learning. Then our machine learning algorithm will use mathematical measures to learn from our data and create a model that will be able to make classifications or predictions. So just make sure that you understand the concept behind it. Classifications and predictions uh, are made by machine learning models. And what happens is our machine learning algorithm will take a look at the data. If it's supervised learning, that it will take a look at the labels and figure out a way to match those data points to labels. Figure out, come up with rules that most effectively break down the data. And uh, after doing it, it will create a model. That model will allow us as developers to create applications in which we can feed data and get the output. Now, the problem here is that how does the machine work? What does it learn? How much has it learned? And what are the rules that it has come up with? In some cases, you can figure out some of the rules. But in most of the cases, you don't really know how it's working underneath the hood. You All you can do is just give it some data, take a look at the predictions, make sure that it's predicting and doing well in the real world. And that's about it. And a machine learning model is as good as the data it is being trained on. So if you have really high quality data with a large volume of data, then you have good then you have a good chance of getting a good accuracy. In case your data set is not good, you don't have uh, your data set is missing a lot of values, or your data set contains values that are outliers, that is not something that you desire in your data set, then it's going to cause a lot of issues for your machine to learn from. So make sure you have a good data set. So let's take a look at the machine learning process. There are seven steps in the machine learning process. The first one is obviously gathering data. So gathering data is one of the most important aspects of any machine learning L, a machine learning problem that we're trying to solve. In machine learning, we, what we try to do is we try to gather data from as many sources as possible. So you can gather data from legacy databases, user interactions, forms filled out by users. You can get a lot of data. This is why many people use Google Forms to get data from users by essentially crowdfunding the data if they don't have a specific place to go to for data. Another place you can use is Kaggle. Kaggle has a lot of data sets. Uh, what you can do is you can get a data set of a particular kind from Kaggle hope to solve a particular problem, let's say air pollution, and you get a lot of those data points to yourself. And then you gather data from multiple sources as well. You can use sensors to gather data as well, especially if you're trying to solve some problem that needs to be solved via using sensors to gather data. And you can use those. And there are many other aspects as well that you can use. After gathering data, we need to prepare the data. Preparing the data basically means cleaning the data, figuring out what are the different problems that we have with the particular data, such as uh, invalid values, missing values, um, could be values that are out of range, could be values that are of different measurements. So if you have temperature taken from two different countries and they're both using different scales, such as one is using Celsius and other one is using Fahrenheit, then you need to figure out how to solve those issues. There's a lot of complications when we get data from multiple places, especially in dates, because dates of one country follow one format and other country follow another format. Could be currency if you're trying to predict stock prices and you have got the prices given from different different stock exchanges then with the stock exchange program you have different currencies and you need to be able to figure out one particular currency and then convert all the currencies to to that and the problem of missing data it can be solved in multiple ways as well such as 
solving the problem of missing data by replacing all the missing data points with zero or one or replacing all the data points with the mean of that particular column of data or just dropping a row that contains missing data if it's not too much then comes choosing the model uh, choosing the model is really an important aspect if it's uh, figuring out what algorithms to use to create a model and different algorithms are good at different things such as if you're trying to learn from an image data set you can use uh, cnn or convolutional neural networks if for instance you are trying to learn from audio data set then you can use lstm long short term memory in neural networks and there are many other different kinds of problems that could be solved with different kinds of neural networks or algorithms that help you understand it better then comes training training is the process of using majority of your data somewhere around 80 to 90 percent of your data to make your machine learning model learn from it so learning from a particular data point or uh, uh, making algorithms learn from particular data is called training Training is basically using the data that you have collected, passing it through the model and allowing it to learn from that. That's basically training. Then comes evaluation. The data that was not used for training, which is the 10 to 20% of the data that we had set aside earlier, is used to evaluate the performance of our model. We give it those uh, inputs, uh, uh, those data points as inputs, and we already have the expected output, which is the label. And then we check what is the predicted output. If the expected and the predicted output are correct, then the model is performing well. If it's not, then it's not performing well. Figure out what is the percentage of the values that are incorrectly classified. And if it is less than satisfactory, then we need to perform another step. That's called hyperparameter tuning. In hyperparameter tuning, although it's not necessary, is a technique that is used when we are trying to uh, optimize our machine learning process. So if we have machine learning uh, algorithms and we have tried multiple algorithms but still we're getting less data, then we use hyperparameter tuning to increase the accuracy. What hyperparameter tuning does is that it fiddles around with the structure of our model, such as the depth of a decision tree, if you're using a decision tree algorithm, the layers of number of layers of a neural network, the number of neurons in a particular layer in a neural network, and so the other things. These things allow us to increase or decrease the uh, algorithm's performance. And based on what change leads to what kind of change in the accuracy, our model will be tuned slightly here and there, and then we'll get the best possible accuracy that we can get. Finally comes prediction. So prediction could be also be thought as the final step, which is also deployment. We deploy it to the real world. And this isn't a fixed end to our machine learning model because this keeps on going uh, if we find out that there are new sets of issues that we are facing with our model, then we gather more data and train the existing model on that data, and then we evaluate hyperparameter tune, and then we deploy it again to make predictions. With that, we we'll come to the demo aspect of our application. For demo, we'll be using natural language processing. Now, natural language processing is such a huge topic that we do not have to create the models ourselves, but we can use the models that are already available to us. Let's see how. So I have Jupyter Notebook. If you have Anaconda and you're using its Jupyter Notebook, then please make sure that you have run these two commands, which is conda install dash c, conda dash pod spacey. This will install spacey, which is a natural language processing library for Python. And you also need to install the en core web sm, which is the model that is used to perform natural language processing on English. If you need a more in-depth model, then you can use the LG model. LG means large, SM means small. So what it will do is it will run Python and it will run the command spacey download en core SM. We want to have this available so that we can load it later on. I'm not going to run it now because I already have it installed. If you're using Anaconda, then run it inside the conda prompt. If you are running Python, then you can just, instead of doing this, run pip install spacey. It will work just fine. Now I'll import Spacey. It is imported. Now I need to load the model. This is going to take a little more time than it took in importing. And this will basically uh, load the model that understands the English language and allows us to perform several different aspects of it, of uh, natural language processing on it. It allows us to tokenize, tag, parse, and 
create vectors out of particular goals so this is the text that we have we have this long block of text in case you don't want to copy this copy any bit of text from wikipedia or any other page run this and now i'm going to perform natural language processing by running it through the nlp function that we had done earlier it's here so i get the document and now what i want to do is i want to figure out what are the nouns or noun phrases available in the chunk of text that i had provided so these are the noun phrases available if i run this sebastian turn self-driving cars google few people and so on and so forth you can also take a look at the verbs that are available and these are the verbs start work drive take tell shake turn talk and say so as you can see this automatically understands the language that we're working on and we don't have to do anything about it finally if you want to take a look at the named entities and phrases and concepts we want we can take a look at that as well so sebastian turn is an entity and it's a person 2007 is a date american is this and turn is an organization recode is an organization this week is a date it's not exactly a date but it's trying to understand what a particular date is so this is basically how natural language processing works uh, in case you want to create your own model you can but since already existing ones are available and it's very difficult to train these models you need to have a lot of data and a lot of computation powers you can use models that are already generated so with that in mind we've come to the end of the session let's take a look at the resources through which you can learn these things